Hello, everyone. Welcome to my Periscope broadcast. I'm Todd Nock. Glad you could join me. Thanks for everyone coming in. So today I'm going to draw a uh, spider Gwen on a purple post-it note here, right there. And so um, let's not mince words. Let's just get right to it. We're going to do mask off spider Gwen. And I'll decide if I should put the hood up or put the hood down here in a sec. I'll start to rough, rough in the shape of her head. Hello everyone, welcome to the broadcast, glad you're here. Thanks for joining me today. Who do I like better, Spider Gwen or Gwenpool? Mm. Good, good question. Um, you know, I'm still kind of getting to know both, so I, I, I like, I like both gals. Let's let's put her hood on in this one. Start to drop in the bangs, but her mask will be off. So as you can see here, I drew in her whole head, even though all this part will not be seen when we ink and color, but I want to know where the full shape of her head, so that when I put her hood on, it, it fits correctly on her head. So young artist, make sure you, you rough out the, the entirety of the head. Don't, just don't draw the face and then start drawing a hood where you think it would uh, cover the head. Make sure you rough in the head so then you know where the head will be. Now, I'm not using any reference material on this one. I've drawn Spider-Gwen so many times now, I feel feel pretty confident in the details that I know, know how her costume works and, and looks. Well, I'll be coming to STL. Is that St. Louis? The St. Louis Comic Con? I will not be at St. Louis Comic Con this year. Had a great time last year. Hope they'll have me back. Watching and eating lunch. All right. Hopefully this is good lunchtime viewing material. Can I draw Olaf from Frozen? I should uh, give that a try sometime. What kind of pencil is this? This is the Uni Kuratoga 0.3 lead, HB lead, mechanical pencil. It's a very fine tipped lead, can break very easily, but it gives you a very, it gives you a very fine, fine detail. And, uh, and I like that. So it's taken a while to d develop a, a lighter touch, not be so heavy handed in my art. Could still have a heavy hand at times. I still tend to break the lead every now and again, but it has trained me to develop a lighter touch. Come to Athens Con in Greece the 3rd and 4th of December. Oh, I wish I could. Fortunately, I will not be able to, uh, to travel for a con in December at this time, so, uh, but it would be fun to come visit Greece. Someday.
All right, let's start dropping in some inks. Tend to start uh, with inks, uh, inking what's in the what's most in the foreground. So her her hood here is what overlaps her hair and face. So I want to I usually start there and work my way backwards into the background, into the depth. Favorite movie? Oh, that's a fun question. My favorite movie. Uh, I got like a lot of different movies, but I'd probably say my favorite um, is probably Waiting for Guffman. It's probably one of my favorite movies. I think it's a very funny movie. Start. It's a, a Christ, one of those Christopher Guest movies. The, this is Spinal Tap guy. It's the one he did after Spinal Tap, but before Best in Show. Well, thanks for the kind words, gang. Appreciate the compliments. Now I focus on the hair here because it overlaps the face. Oh, what size micron is this? Great question. It's the 08. Favorite comic? Uh, oh boy, I like all sorts of comics. I'd probably have to say X-Men. I've been an X-Men fan since I was 14. 14 or was it 13? Actually, I guess I was still 13 when I started reading comics. Can you have new Wild Guard? Ah, I appreciate the support for my creator own series. Hope I can get a new Wild Guard story out. Probably not this year, but stay tuned. I have some other creator owned ideas I want to try as well. Oh, you're going to call me Sensei Todd? All right. I appreciate appreciate that. Do I have a favorite drawing that I've done? Ah, man, I draw so much stuff. It's hard to say if I have one favorite, you know? Uh, so I can't really say I have one favorite drawing I've done. Can I do a quick hands tutorial? Maybe someday. Thanks for the suggestion. You're terrible at hands? Yeah, hands take a lot of practice. You really got to practice hands. I love drawing hands because I love how expressive they are. You can convey a lot of emotion through hands, just like you can through facial expressions. Inking tutorial, hopefully this uh, kind of helps fit that bill. I'm using the zero one micron now. Where are we on the, right there for some of the finer details.
Oh, you learn something new every time. Right on. I appreciate you watching my videos, my broadcasts. I'm glad they're a help to y'all. Appreciate y'all hanging out with me while I draw. If I were to give a Netflix series to any comic book character, who would it be? Let's see. Well, it'd probably have to be a Marvel character, since it seems like Marvel is the place for Netflix TV series. You know what would be kind of cool? Is uh, a Power Pack show. An adventure, a super, good superhero adventure show, you know? Not a kitty show, but not, not nothing adult, you know, nothing like that would be TV mature. But, you know, something something that's really cool and fun and has some good mystery to it. You know, an overarching story for the Power Pack kids. Or Cloak and Dagger, that would be cool. I think Cloak and Dagger would work really well with what they're kind of doing with the Netflix shows right now. How long does it take me to do a head sketch at a convention? Depends on the character. And it depends on how, how busy it is at my table. So there's a lot of different factors there. Conventions have a lot of hoopla going on. So talking to people, signing comics, as well as drawing the commissions. Oh, the Cloak and Dagger are getting a show? Awesome. Oh, it looks like my, my, my wish is going to be fulfilled. What character do y'all want to see uh, get a Netflix show? Favorite chips? Uh, Doritos. Nacho cheese Doritos. Or nacho cheesier Doritos. I'll accept either. Ghost Rider, Moon Knight, Rom, Rom Space Knight, that would be fun. That would be really cool. Now some 005 here for the finer details of inking her eyes. I use a thinner tool here so that uh, the inks don't get too clumpy or muddy. And um, if I use the 08 here, I couldn't get the finer details, so it's good to know the the uh, what the different pen nib sizes can do for you. Wow, there's a lot of suggestions there for Netflix shows. Right on. Those are all great ideas. Okay, so we're set for inks there. Let's uh, carefully erase. I'm going to be careful not to crinkle the paper. So since it's adhered to the backing board, I just pull, gently pull down from the top, from where it's adhered to the board down. I just don't go back and forth because coming back up this way could cr crumple it up. See like that? So that's why I pull gently away from the top of the paper. Dust off the eraser shavings. Now it's time for some Copic color. So even though the the um, post note is purple, I still use the same colors I would use if they were if this was drawn on a white piece of paper, ideally. So I'm starting with some E00, which I use for most all of my Caucasian characters. My base color, mid mid range, mid tone color. Oh, you bought some warm and cool gray markers. Excellent. 
That's what I started with. Started with the even tones and then liked them so much I got all the odd numbered Copic warm and cool grays. And then I started to introduce colors one by one to my collection. Let's come in with some E01. Start to kind of shade out some of this. Do I want to eat ribs and play Mario Kart tonight? Wow, you know, I don't think I've ever gotten an invite to come over to someone's house to eat ribs and play Mario Kart. Those are two very tempting things because I love ribs and I love Mario Kart. My question is, will there be nacho cheesy or Doritos on deck? Because otherwise, I'd have to decline. It's not a party if it doesn't got some nacho cheesy or Doritos. You can have nacho cheese Doritos. That, that's more of a get together. If you want to make it a party, you got to go cheesier. You got to go nacho cheesier. And if you go to Cool Ranch, then then that's like that's like a wedding reception because that's now you're getting fancy. So you got to really consider what chips are you going to have at your event to complement the event, you know? Now, if it's like the wild buffalo wing and, and, and uh, blue cheese nacho cheese uh, uh, Doritos, the, the buffalo wing Doritos, then that's more of kind of like you're, you're having a Super Bowl party. But um, And if it's like the salsa verde, then you are smack dab in the middle of a fiesta. So your chips are really going to set the tone for your party. So a Mario Kart party, for me, that's that's just simple, classic video games, Nintendo. You know, you, you want something like Nacho Cheesier. But these are just my personal chip opinions. Your chip opinions may, may differ, and that's okay. I have some very intense feelings about food. I have very intense feelings about uh, nacho chips and Skittles, really. So far, those are the, the two foods I have addressed here in my broadcasts. Now I'm coming in with some E84 here. It's kind of a slightly brownish shade to start her blonde hair. Pita chips, yes or no? Yes. Pita chips are a tasty chip. Opinion on green apple Skittles? You'll have to find my other broadcast where I, I go off on a rant on green apple Skittles. It's a pretty sensitive topic. I don't know if I can really go into that right now. I don't think it's fair to the other broadcasters or broadcast viewers, but thank you for asking. Have you ever seen me at a convention? I'm happy to talk Skittles with with anyone at a convention. So let's see, that's some Y21 there, some Y21. Uh, and then I'm gonna come in with some Y00. Have ever planned to be in Italy at Luca Comics? No, but I've heard awesome stuff about that event. I'd love to come, come to that event someday. So this is some Y00. So just working lighter, lighter, lighter. Blending, blending through. Okay, so let's let's uh, hook up her eyes here with some BG34. Was was I at Dragon Con this year? No, I've never been a guest at Dragon Con, but I'd like to come sometime. I'll bring my Doctor Who cosplay. It looks like a very fun con. I hope to be there someday. Let's see, I need to add a little more shadow underneath her, her um, bangs here. Which doctor? Tenth doctor. 
I also have the Ninth Doctor jacket. I just don't have the Ninth Doctor haircut yet. I'm not sure if I want to commit to that haircut right now. I'm enjoying my hair while I have it. Some uh, R20 here for the cheeks, the nose. Do I have any tips on designing a comic book character? Um, not really. Um, I mean, there's so many factors that would come into play. Um, who is your character? What is their personality? What is their powers? Um, or what are their powers, I guess would be proper English. Um, what are their powers? Or what is their power? Um, where are they from? What, what, are, what are their sensibilities? Who are they? You know, what, how would they dress in real life? Now, how would that reflect in their costume? I don't have ninth doctor ears. No, I don't. I don't. I'd have to find a way to make them stick out. But I think I can do the ninth doctor smile. Then we have some R our R zero zero here to kind of blend through. Um, with the culprit markers, is the seventy two piece set a good? good uh, to start off with. I don't know. I've never bought a set of Copics. I've bought all of mine individually because I want the colors that I want and need rather than being restricted to just what a set would give. So I can't speak on sets. Coming back with some E00 to kind of blend all this through again. But if you'd like to get one of those sets, I'm sure you'll have a great time with the markers that you'll get. But you might find that there are some gaps in your collection that you'll need to fill out with individual markers. You want to see me work with Todd McFarlane? Please make it happen. Well, Todd and I both do the same job. We're both artists. So um, I don't see there'd be many opportunities for him and I to work together. Though I do appreciate his work. I've been a fan of his work since I was a kid. So... Uh, it would be an honor to work with him if such a thing were possible. But since we both do the same job, it would be, you know, it, it's easier for me to team up with a writer or a colorist because then we'd be each contributing a different aspect. So a little uh, RV32 there to start off on the lips. Coming in with some R85 to darken a little bit. In fact, we're going to use this R85 as well for the inner, inner pink lining of her, her hoodie. Will I ever do a Batman Periscope broadcast? Um, very possibly. I could very possibly do a Batman Periscope broadcast again someday. I've done one before. One of my earlier broadcasts was a Batman one, and that one's currently on my YouTube channel. So you can see that one right now or not right now, stick around, finish this uh, broadcast, but you can go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Todd Knock, and uh, go to the Paris or the, to the Periscope broadcast playlist, and you can find the, um, the uh, Bat Batman one that I've done. And then you won't even have to wait. Come back with some uh, E84 here just to darken up some of these uh, strands of hair, kind of where a shadow would be cast. Under, from underneath her hoodie and or face. Oops. Favorite Spider-Man villain? Uh, I'd say Venom is probably one of my favorite Spider-Man villains from the Todd McFarlane era of Spider-Man. I also like Sandman. I think Sandman is a fantastic visual. So let's put some uh, warm grays in here into her face for some shadow. Do I collect art from other artists? Uh, sometimes. I've got uh, some the uh, variant covers that I commissioned from artists to do for my Wild Guard series. I've got those hanging up in my office. So I have a Paco Medina, an Ed McGinnis, uh, Arthur Adams, and a Micro Ringo. And it's so exciting that I have a Micro Ringo piece before he passed. So uh, it's a tragic that he's no longer with us. He died way too soon. But to have him draw my characters was in a complete a complete honor, honor, and uh, very thankful to have gotten a chance to work with him and get to know him and uh, just a little bit. Um, so I'm now some W four here just for some darker shadows. Will 
What do I think about Homecoming? Will I be able to see it? I don't know what Homecoming is. I haven't heard of that. So I, I, do, I don't, I'm not able to answer that question, unfortunately. So now some cool gray three here from for uh, the eyelids. Switching up the cool grays just a bit. Oh, Spider-Man Homecoming, gotcha. I thought Homecoming was some other random movie. Spider-Man Homecoming, oh yeah, that looks great. I, I love Tom Holland as Spider-Man. Loved him in Civil War. Looking forward to Spider-Man Homecoming. Thank you for uh, clarifying there for me. Some uh, cool gray two. Back to the warm grays for some shadows here in the hair. Warm gray four. Let's see, now let's come back with some cool grays. Now I am going darker than I would if it were on a comic book or on a white white piece of paper because I'm going to do my white pencil trick. So I need to come in with a cool gray five, probably twice as dark as what I would do if this were a uh, on a white paper. Which Spider-Man actor do I prefer over the years? Um... You know, I think they've all done a great job, so I, I can't, couldn't say which one I prefer. Well, I guess I would say I, I think... Yeah, I like, I like what each of them did. They're each their own movies, but I am really looking forward to Tom Holland because, like I said, I thought he did a great job in Civil War. Which, which uh, Spider-Man actor do you guys like? Oh, and I also have to give it up for Nicholas Hammond, who was the 1970s made-for-TV Spider-Man actor from the... Uh, made-for-TV movies and short-lived six-episode Spider-Man TV series that were then repackaged as three bonus movies. Let's uh, come in here with a little C3, cool gray three. Just to kind of blend out a little bit and put some of this in the eye here. For my eye trick. All right, so unless I want to darken up these lips just a smidge, so I'm going to do a little E04. And pull this E04 down here through the, um, through the hood. Did I ever see the Japanese Spider-Man? I saw that one clip where his robot, the, the Jaguar, turns into a giant mecha robot so um but i've only seen the clip that you know goes around social media so next up is uh let's before i go to my white pencil trick let's uh drop in a, a fade here in the background and we're going to go kind of dark since she has such a light colored hoodie so we're going to start with it uh neutral six How's it going? It is going good. Sonic underscore Ninja. Good to see you. Welcome to my broadcast. Hopefully I'll see you at New York Comic Con. So now I'm coming down to the N neutral gray five, pulling from the coloring into the six and then pulling down into the purple of the board. Helps create that gradation, a smooth gradation. Then some Neutral four, the N4, pulling from the five down into the color of the board. Wild Guard crossover, X-Force or Titans? I would say probably the Titans for a Wild Guard crossover. And pull down with some neutral gray three. Gonna skip neutral two and go right to the neutral one to uh, blend here down into the the base. Just want a little bit of purple there at the very bottom. All right, so now it's time for the white pencil trick. So I take my Prismacolor watercolor white pencil, or blanc, which is French for white, and I'm going to come in here and then color her eyes. 
I'm going to color in over the gray that I laid down for the shade of her hoodie. So you can still kind of see the gray underneath the white pencil. So it kind of helps give that shading to the uh, to the hoodie, the sculpted Copic gray. So see how you can still see the gray, but it's coming out lighter, so that's why I use a darker shade of gray to account for, to make sure it's the right shade of, of gray once the white pencil goes over it. So that's my trick of doing white on, the color white on a colored post-it note. How do I make the eyes make it? How do I make them look like they're looking at us? Um, I I don't know. It's I it, it I just I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I just kind of draw them that way. I, I I never really thought of how to make them do that. They just they just do. You know, um, very interesting question. One that I I apologize for not having a better answer for. I'm glad that uh, you like that she's engaging the viewer. I guess that's kind of part of it. You, when you're roughing in the eyes, just double check where are they at, and if you want them to look at the reader or the viewer, make sure that uh, you have them in the right place. So even though her head's this, her head is facing this way, but her eyes are facing that way, in a sense. So that's probably why it looks like they're uh, engaging you. Give them a little extra white there to create a, a happy little fold. Happy folds. Little Bob Ross, these folds here. Let's put a little white highlight through her her through her hair that's just um just peeking out from underneath the uh, hoodie. Same here on the, the locks that flow flow down. You know, they're happy locks. Happy little locks. Put a little white highlight here on the nose, or at the start of a white highlight. Kind of bring it up the bridge a little bit. Put a little highlight here on her bottom lip. Okay. Now I'll start to work on the finishing move. My Uniball Signo White Gel Pen. One of my favorites to use here in my post-it videos. Will I ever draw some Transformers? Maybe so. I do enjoy some Transformers. Preferred number of panels per comic page. It depends on the, the pacing of the story. It could be one giant panel. It could be five panels. It could be 12 panels or anywhere in between. Um, or even more than 12 panels if you can make it work right. So the, the, it's, not, it's not really preferred per page. It's what does the story call for? How do we want to pace the story? How do we want to... Um, what kind of information do we need to give and, and what sort of emotion or experience do we want to elicit from and for the reader? So um, so there's no, no one set answer for that, unfortunately. It's what, what moves the story along at the proper pace. If it's a talking scene, you might have more panels. If it's an action scene, you might have fewer panels, but some action scenes might require multiple panels, like a bunch of panels. It all just depends on how you want to tell that story visually, how you'd want to pace that. So now I'm coming in here with this white pencil or white uh, gel pen to um, make the webs that are inside of her hoodie. 
this is step one of my process here. Let's put the very bright white highlight here in her in her eyes. Just a little bit there on the nose. Let's put a spider web here behind her as well. Just a happy little web. It's your web, it's your world. Maybe she just spun this web recently and standing by her handiwork. Maybe she just caught caught a villain as some sort of a crook who was trying to knock over a convenience store or a bank or something or some super powered interdimensional family that wants to eat all the different spider characters from the different universes. You know, it's just your little web, your happy little web. You want to mix up your lines. You don't want them to always be too uniform. You want some lines close together, some some farther apart. Don't always want to be uniform. Sometimes a uniform, uniformly drawn web works. Sometimes you want to really mix it up to create more for the eye to play with. But it's your web. Make it happy. Happy web. Bob Ross webs. All right, so we're not quite done yet. I got one more trick here I need to do. So the uh, the webs inside of her hoodie are not white, they are teal. Um, but since I put down the pink color, it's a little more difficult to get the brightness of that teal to show. So what I do is I, I put in the white, and then once that white has dried, we'll double check here, yep, yeah, this, uh, this is all dried. Now I go over this very lightly, very carefully with my teal marker, which I'm using a BG09. Um, and so now it's starting to get that, that, that teal color look. It's easy for them to do this with uh, the computer coloring, but if you're doing a commission, this is what I've discovered works best for me if I want to create this effect by hand. You have to be very careful Go very lightly and definitely make sure that that um, that gel pen ink is dry before going over it with Copic marker. And there you go, you got teal webs inside of her hoodie. Let's get a little more gray here. I want to put a little more gray. Let's bring in a little neutral three here on her eyelid. Just a little bit under her chin there for a little more shadow. And now let's put the, an autograph here and wrap this one up. Today is the 5th of September. And there we go, there's Spider Gwen. So I'll flip around here and we'll uh, take a few more questions for those that I might have missed and then we'll sign off for this broadcast. There we are, hey, how's it going gang? Have I seen the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies? I saw the first one, don't think I've seen the second one yet. Thank you, thanks for the kind words. Glad you like what you saw, appreciate that. Thanks for the hearts as well, gangs. Gangs, gang. You'd love to see a Miles Morales drawing. Definitely. Have to keep that in mind. When did I know that I'd make it in comics? Um, when I was offered a full-time job working for Rob Liefeld. It's like, all right, I'm doing this full-time. I'm now doing it in comics. I missed uh, something about the 298th time of something. Sorry, I missed it. Feel free to repost. I'm not quite sure if I understood what you were commenting on. What eraser do I use to not smudge the ink? I use the uh, Statler Mars plastic eraser. Um, I don't find that I get any smudging. But uh, no matter what eraser I use, I erase gently and carefully. Favorite candy? Um, probably say Skittles. Um, inks or pencils? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. I enjoy both of those project, uh, aspects of drawing. And since I do my own inks, I, I I really like it. Do I like Funkos? Yes, I do. I have a, I have a few. Um, let's see. Will I be at the Intercomic Con in Cologne? No, but I'd love to be a guest there. So let them know you'd like to see me there. 
Um, I don't know which character I'll be drawing next. It's always kind of last minute. Um, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. What kind of Doritos were those again? Depends on what your 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 event is. What kind of get together is your your get together is? Um, I was saying if it's a Mario Kart rib sort of party, nacho cheesy or Doritos are the way to go. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So I'll take one more question here and then we'll sign off. So who's going to be the lucky person here? Let's see. The Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. We already answered that one. Um, do I? What do I specifically like about to the Tom Holland Spidey? Um, I thought he was really funny. I thought they did a great job with the writing for him. I think he's. Uh, I just think he's a really, really cool kid, and uh, will make a great Spider-Man. So, who's on first? Exactly. Thank, gang, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for joining me. I'll be posting this illustration on my social network, so be sure to swing by my Twitter, Instagram, Art of Todd Nook Facebook page, Tumblr account, um, and you can see the finished product. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out with me, and I hope you all have a great day. And for those of you that are celebrating Labor Day, have a great Labor Day. I'm going to get back to laboring. No rest for the freelance artist. And, uh, but it's fun to get to take a little break and hang out with you guys. I hope you all had a good time, and I'll see you again real soon. All the best. Bye-bye.